Philadelphia up against host Brazil, a South American derby that could offer up the shock of the tournament. Now, South African ballet entrepreneur Dirk Bardenhorst is, uh, well, he's back with yet another impressive ballet star's lineup presenting Russian, Russian ballet star under his banner at the Johannesburg Theatre. Featuring stars from several of Russia's greatest ballet companies, Russian ballet star showcases these dancers in a glittering array of highlights from the best love ballet classics. Now, they're with me in studio this morning. Nikolai is one of the dancers with you, Dirk. Uh, in the show, just to, just tell us tell us about this fantastic event that you are putting forward. Well, this year has been a year full of ballet, and I've had ballet dancers from China, Korea, Cuba, America, Europe, that have performed in, in galas that I've hosted this year, and never done the Russians before, and we've had a lot of Russians in South Africa, and for the last few years, we've, Russian ballet has been getting a bad name with some of the dancers that have come here, so I've really wanted to put together a great group of beautiful ballet dancers that dance incredibly well. And so, for me, this is the pinnacle of the year of ballet in South Africa, a winter season of ballet. And so we are really fortunate to have dancers from the Mikhailovsky, like Nikolai, uh, from the Bolshoi, from Eifmann Company. So a really, really great array of beautiful dancers that are going to be dancing beautiful uh, ballets where you can compare what you've seen over the year and really see the Russian style come to life. Nikhil, I want to ask you about the Russian style and about ballet, really, and what it means to, to the Russian people. It's really central to your culture, isn't it? Well, it's very famous and very popular in Russia in nowadays as well. So it's, it's a very big thing for Russians. We fall in love with it from the very beginning. And, and do you, as, as a young person, you are brought up with the ballet in, in Russia? Yeah. Very much, huh? Yeah. When we were walking here, he was talking this morning about the fact that in Russia there's a lot of oil and a lot of dancing. So yeah. those are the two careers you can choose. <laughs> Petrol or the dancing. So. If you don't work in the oil industry, you become a dancer. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly. it. Dirk, tell us about some of the classics that, uh, that we'll be seeing and, and what people can really be looking forward to. Well, the dying swan is going to be one of the big things. And, and I've, I've asked the the organizers, we have Kitty Pedler from South Africa dancing with it, so we are combining for the first time ever in the world the Dying Swan with a South African black ballerina and a Russian white ballerina. Um, and I, I talk about the color of their tutus, um, <laughs> and that's the, one of the big things for me. But we're doing the Big Swan Lake Pas de Deux, the Don Q Pas de Deux, uh, the Grand Park Classique Pas de Deux. Which ones are you doing? Sleeping Beauty? Sleeping Beauty, yeah, right. um, And? Doing uh, Shakirazada. Scheherazade, Some contemporary and the Scheherazade that. is really one of those true Russian masterpieces where mm. you, you get the sense of Russia in the dancing. It's just really, really beautiful. And, and what are your impressions of, of South Africa, the country? Well, uh, I'm really excited to be here. First time in South Africa, actually first time on television. So oh, really a lot impressed. of firsts. I'm really happy to be here. And and, and what do you think? And you've worked with a few of the South African uh, dancers now, I think. Yeah, what, actually, what do you think I, of the South I didn't Africans? expect this uh, from South Africa, actually. So friendly, nice people smiling everywhere around me. So I'm really happy to be here. That's fantastic. Fantastic to have you with us. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a treat that I think South Africans don't always get to see or, or don't always uh, are exposed to. But, but Dirk, tell us about the big names uh, that will be performing. It's always ab about who's here, I suppose. We have uh, Prima Ballerina from the Kiev company in Ukraine, uh, Natalia Matsak. She's dancing with uh, her partner for nine years already, uh, Denis uh, Nedak. That we also have Andris um, Pisariev also from there. So uh, beautiful dancer, fiery, exciting. Then we have Nikolai. We have, um, who are some of the other dancers, Nikolai? Help me out. Ala, Ala Bocherova from uh, St. Petersburg Ballet. Uh, and then we Eichmann. have the two from the Eifmann, yeah. which is Lubov and uh, Oleg. Oleg. So, um, and they're doing some choreographies of uh, Boris Eifmann, which never been seen in South Africa before, cost a fortune to be able to do anywhere in the world and we're very, very fortunate that they've decided that we could do it in South Africa. So we're really, really very excited about that. So all at the Joburg Theatre, 
book at joebergtheater.com. Um, and it's only four shows. Really, really get there and make sure that you see a night with the Russians because it is very beautiful. We also have something we haven't done before, uh, an opera singer, Larisa Akhmitova, who will be singing some nice Russian songs, yeah. some beautiful piece from uh, Tosca. And uh, we've taken all the Tchaikovsky um, pieces from Swan Lake. And the producer of the show, Ruslan Nurdinov, um, comp composed, uh, uh, sorry, wrote some lyrics for it. And it's just incredibly beautiful to see. Yeah, that would be amazing. I look forward to it because I'll be there. But tell us about, you recently had the American Ballet. Uh, they were, yeah, they were fantastic. But tell us about the little nuance, the difference between the Russian and the American and, and maybe a little bit of the history and how the shows went. Well, the shows went incredibly well. And we did also the, the Ballet in the Bush where we did uh, raise some money for the, for the baby rhinos or the rhino orphanage. And um, the audiences just absolutely love the fiery and speed of the Russian dancers. And then, oh, sorry, the American dancers. And, and one of the Russians spoke the other day and he said, the, the Americans are, 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 are dancing like machines, but the Russians dance really from their heart. Yeah. And it's, it's a passion, it's a lifestyle. And that really, really is true. As, as Nikolai had mentioned earlier, from a very young age, ballet is part of mother's milk. It's, it's what they live and breathe from a very young age. So, so Nikolai, if, if people have uh, watched the American ballet, now they can come tonight and watch uh, real ballet with yeah, passion it will be and love. Completely different, yeah. I promise you. Uh, we'll do our best, and we. I hope you enjoy it. So come to see us. Show starts from tonight. The first uh, first gala is tonight. Tonight, tonight. and, and there's uh, you said only four shows yes, four. over so the week. Tonight, one uh, Saturday afternoon at three o'clock, and at eight o'clock, and Sunday at three o'clock. And I think the one important thing is the fact that a lot of parents think it's not a story ballet, it's not Sleeping Beauty, so therefore, it's not for their kids. However, this is for your kids because it's got only the highlights of all the big ballets. So your husband and your are able to sit through the ballet and not fall asleep because they're bored with the ballet. And that's really important that bring your children, come and see them, get, let them get excited about the beautiful ballet. Do, do, we have a, do we have that kind of culture here in South Africa where parents take their children to the ballet? We have. And if you come on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon, the parents arrive with their little girls decked out to the full teeth, tiara, little tutus, the fairy wands. And if you don't bring it, you can buy it at the theater. The Friends of the Ballet will sell those. But it really, really is changing. And it's, it's becoming quite an exciting outing and an event for the whole family to come to the ballet. Well, it's going to be a fantastic event. Starts tonight. Thank you for joining us today. Nikolai Dirk, thank you thank once you. again. And, and all the best with uh, what I'm sure will be a fantastic show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now time for us to end the week on a high note, I suppose. We're going to talk to the, well, our deputy sports editor, Janet Whitten, who's here with us, to give us a little bit of a heads up as to what will be probably one of uh, the landmarks weekends this year, isn't it? It is. It's amazing. The first weekend of July is always like that because we always have the start of the Tour de France, we have the Wimbledon final, we have the Durban July. It's always one of those really big sporting weekends. Start at the top though, Wimbledon. It's almost like we're a little bit at a sort of changing of the guard moment in time at Wimbledon, both the men's and the women's draw, isn't it? It is in a sense. I think it's too early to write off Rafa Nadal just yet. Yes, I think course. he's still got a couple of years to go. Um, Roger Federer may very well be coming to the end of his career. I think that, that Nadal, Djokovic, obviously he's still there, so he's still going to be around. Don't write off Andy Murray yet either. I think he's still going to be around. But certainly it's nice to see a whole lot of youngsters coming through. Um, especially in the women's draw. And in the women's draw in particular, this Jeannie Bouchard is going to be a around for a while this young Canadian she's only 20 years old she has extraordinary confidence and she's just so cool she's not overwhelmed by anything she's got a big game she's a big girl big and strong she hits it very very hard